Hey guys, uh, welcome to the webinar. Uh, we're gonna begin here in just a second. So we're gonna give you guys like a minute to grab some coffee, you grab that last minute drink here, and uh, we'll go ahead and get started here in about 30, 40 seconds. All right, guys, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, and get started. So, hey, thanks for taking the time out of your day to, uh, to join us on the Google for Jobs webinar. This is, uh, for those of you who are familiar with Track 5, um, we've been doing a couple of these going over our software and our offering. But we're going to start doing a lot more of these in kind of the areas of our expertise, which would be like internet marketing and programmatic and stuff like that. Um, we just feel it's great to contribute to a robust community and you know, help our clients kind of learn a little bit more as we learn things and, and share ideas and stuff like that. So this is gonna be pretty action packed. I'm gonna jump right into it. I have done a decent amount of speaking across the country and I kind of only know one way to do it, which is to give you guys a ton of information, a lot of useful information, uh, but a lot and quick. So feel free, uh, if you have any questions, you can type them into the chat box on the right here. And my team, as we get finished with this, we're going to reserve a lot of time for questions so we can go back and forth with those. Um, so yeah, let's get into Google for Jobs here. So who am I? Who's talking? <laughs> my name's Oliver Feekins. I'm the president of Track 5. Um, those of you who know Track 5 or don't know Track 5, we'll talk about that in a sec. But previously to this, this current company, Track 5, I also owned uh, one of the leading internet marketing agencies in the country called Web Talent. Um, those of you might not have heard of us, but we've done uh, work behind the brands like Dun & Bradstreet. Uh, Armstrong, online universities. We even did SEO for a private island. I mean, you name it, we've done it. So that's been my previous 15 years. And, and before that, I, can, I actually worked for a startup that competed with uh, MySpace and Facebook back in the day. I'm dating myself now. Uh, SEO, SEM, conversion, recruitment marketing, that's my background. That's where I come from. We've been in the job board space for about 12 years now, over a decade when you know job boards, Gen, gen 1, all the way till the marketplace model now. Uh, we've seen some things. Personally, uh, I'm an investor. I'm a professor. I teach entrepreneurship studies. Uh, I'm a philanthropist. I have a foundation um, for fun. I'm a pilot. And uh, my newest adventure is a uh, new dad. <laughs> so there's a lot less flying and a lot more diaper changing that's happening right now uh, in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, which is where we're from. Uh, but but yeah, it's uh, it's pretty awesome. So those of you guys who are new parents or re remember the times when you were parents, uh, forgive me, a little little sleep deprived, but uh, but nonetheless, it's an awesome experience. All right, so we have with me uh, Jill and Brett, uh, who manage our account management, our client services, and as well as our sales. I'd like to to give them an opportunity to say hi here on the webinar. So and then also Brett's gonna tell you for those of you who don't know about us, who are just joining us. Uh, from the the healthcare market, the travel healthcare market, Brett can tell you a quick thirty seconds on who we are, so you just kind of know what we do. But uh, Jill, why don't you go out and say hi to everybody, and then Brett uh, jump in there as well. Hi everyone, this is Jill Armstrong, um, director of client accounts at Track Five. Uh, happy to see a lot of names that look familiar to me. I'm, I've worked with a few of you in the past on Travel Nurse Source, uh, Allied Travel Careers, and or Locum Jobs Online. Um, so good to see you all here. I hope this is really helpful for all of you and uh, looking forward to gaining some more knowledge myself. Great. Hey, everybody. This is uh, Brett Cook. Uh, I am the digital sales manager here at Track 5. Uh, I have been with the company about three years now. Um, so what do we do? Uh, we make industry-specific, uh, very niche-type recruitment services. So as you can see here, our, our lineup, if you will, um, as you see primarily in healthcare, um, then we have also a, a trucking board as well. I'm not sure if you are familiar. There's uh, been a pretty uh, big driver shortage uh, throughout the country, but uh, that's, that's going to be our newest uh, our newest board, but, um, you know, kind of our flagship programs are going to be our healthcare related boards. Uh, you know, we've been able to connect, um, you know, clients and, and staffing agencies with, with not only candidates, but qualified 
candidates. And uh, it's been pretty cool to, uh, you know, work kind of hand in hand with Oliver here. And uh, like I said, I started three years ago and just the way this company has grown and, and certainly appreciate all your guys' time today. And hopefully you can take away some uh, some pretty cool stuff here, Oliver. Uh, and, I, and I do want to give uh, a big awe to Oliver's uh, baby picture. Uh, he's, he's, he's a newer dad. So, uh, you know, we're all <laughs> there. We go, I think everybody wanted to do that. So um, just to make them feel good. I got, <laughs> Thanks, got my awe. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, they, they're cute when they're like this. They, they get worse when they get older, I think. Anyway. All right, guys. So here's the topic for today. Here's what we're going to go through, right? So I want to take you from a 30,000 foot view down to ground level, right? So we're going to talk a little bit like methodically about the industry. And I'm talking about the HR tech, job board, job marketing type of range from the 30,000 foot level. We're going to work our way down into Google for jobs because uh, it's important to know what Google for jobs is coming into and how it's going to change that industry. We're going to talk about kind of what you need to succeed. We're going to talk about how to get started on Google for jobs and how to see if you're actually doing it correctly. We're going to talk about some optimization tactics and some pro tips, which I have in here as well. We're going to go over a couple case studies. And we're also going to talk just a little bit about how the Google for jobs kind of complements an already existing marketing strategy or job board strategy. It is one of a job board. It is, it is inclusive. Um, but again, a lot of the job boards work with Google for jobs as well. So it's a very, uh, I don't want to say incestuous relationship, but it is, it's just how a lot of these job boards are. Everyone's um, cross promoting to each other. So there's this massive job board network amongst the tons of competitors where you can kind of show through a really vast network of exposure. Uh, and then we're going to wrap it up and have a decent amount of time here for Q and a. So, uh, all right, so let's talk about present day. Now, I want to be fully clear here. Present day was this This was done before coronavirus, this, this presentation here shortly before. So I realize present day is <laughs> a little bit skewed in these times. But, but let's just talk about the job recruitment market, the job board market specifically, because as we talk about Google for jobs, they are essentially a job board. That's what they are. There's nothing different that Google does that everyone else is doing. However, they are raising the bar a little bit, which we're going to talk about it. But, but really, the bar has been raising, and the industry has been changing for the last two or three years. More innovation in the job board space in the last two to three years than I've seen in the last 10 uh, combined. So changes are here. I mean, we've seen this not just from a – uh, a product standpoint or a product roadmap standpoint, but we've seen it just from the amount of attention that job boards have had since the kind of sh uh, talent shortage and the increase in the economy over the last several years. Uh, but one of the ways we track this is not only by VC investment and things like that, which uh, record VC investment in, in job boards and recruiting platforms and HR tech in the last three years, uh, but we've seen it just with the moving and shifting, right? So we saw you know record breaking acquisitions of, for example, LinkedIn by Microsoft, which is essentially a recruiting tool and a sales tool, twenty six billion dollars. We saw um, you know Randstad apparently reportedly purchase you know Monster for $429. Recruit Holdings, which I believe is a Japanese company, uh, international company at least, you know, purchasing Glassdoor and Indeed for 1.2 and 1 billion respectively, and then Indeed buying simply hired for hundreds of millions of dollars. It's a you know, rumored price, it definitely was undisclosed, and then completely just to shut them down and redirect traffic to Indeed. So consolidation is pretty good. Um, what it's done is, and as we move through the last couple of years, is the job board industry and the recruitment uh, HR tech industry has seen our platforms kind of break into three or four different types, or three or four different segments, if you will. We have like the generalist job board functionality, which is like your career builder, your zip recruiter, your, your Tauru, your next, your, your even Facebook jobs is just a very basic job board classified ad type of functionality built onto a social network. Um, from there, you have kind of your niche job boards, right? So the niche job boards, besides being in a niche market, typically include a little bit more community or a little bit more of a platform function um, because they're able to speak broadly across their site to a specific niche market. They can talk, for example, the ladders can talk specifically about sales. Dice can talk all about technology, create tools. They can create community, user-generated content that applies deep and wide to everybody on that platform. Here's ours, all truck jobs, travel near stores, you've seen them. We can produce that content. We can create that user experience because the entire platform and the entire site is built around one uh, industry-leading um, you know, type of, of, of message or one uh, niche market. Marketplaces have came up in the last few years. Um, for those of you who are in a healthcare space, Wonderly and, and Nursefly were not the first ones. Those markets, have, that type of model had, has been out for years. 
uh, hired Vettery, and I believe Vettery was purchased by Adeco um, for some crazy amount of money recently, the last couple of years as well. Uh, and these are interesting, right? So the marketplace model is kind of, I wouldn't necessarily say an evolution of the job boards, but it's just a different way of doing it. It's, it's, it's basically evened out the playing field between the users and the, the companies. And typically what we've seen is, is these are a little bit, well, they are a lot harder to scale um, for a business than a traditional job board because the job board provides a little bit more pro agency, pro business type of functionality where the marketplaces are generally hinged on that 50-50 um, that meet you in the middle type of, of role. And typically um, we've even seen one more uh, kind of movement now which is this new category where you're starting to see job boards enter into the recruiting market. So, you know, and, and it makes sense. Like somebody like Indeed who has the, you know, massive market share, why wouldn't they just hire recruiters and go after people? Which they're starting to do. So I wouldn't put it past a lot of these job boards. And, and you can see some of them in our transportation industry, they create job boards and then they also have, have agencies as well. Like they're double dipping. So it's just, it's just kind of where the industry is going. You know, I can say at Track 5, we have no interest and do have no desire to go into the staffing business. Um, for those of you who don't know me, but I, I started there in one of my first jobs. And hats off to you guys. I know how hard you guys work every day uh, to get those leads. I, I remember that time. And, and uh, yeah, we have really no desire to, to get into that besides being a massive conflict of interest. So, so what does this mean? And what, what does this have to do with Google for Jobs? Well, before we talk about the entrance of Google for Jobs, prior to Google for Jobs, the bar was already raising. We had to work harder than we had to, bef to before because now we couldn't just lease technology or we couldn't just pay a monthly fee to get a job board and throw you know, a crap job board up and go and sell it for $300 a month. We had to build a brand. Not only that, we had to diversify and build our technology out. So now we're coming to the market pre-Google for Jobs by including things like programmatic, artificial intelligence, a mobile first platform mobile first app application platform because remember we're just not we're not just a website we're a, a database driven platform which has to be mobile first and mobile friendly so um you know we're just going on a two-year refactoring process here at track five where we're actually redoing all our sites to kind of include a lot of this functionality uh programmatic you know we're starting to do some low level ai planning um you know we're getting into this because this is where the bar has been moved um and when it comes to users the job boards are really leading to more, more privacy, more disclosure, and more, uh, and it's not just the, the, the politics, and it's not just the, the marketing trends, it's, there's legislative trends. Uh, you know, TCP, you know, TCPA, Telephone Consumer Protection Act, uh, has been out for years with class action lawsuits for divulg divulging privacy via text message without consent. Massive penalties and fines for marketing with text message if you're not doing it right. That's why those of you who sign our agreements we put a lot of this, this clause in there. We, we protect our leads that come out with TCPI, uh, TCPA requirements so that anything comes in, we've cleaned up our act, like our leads are compliant. But we've also had to invest in a lot of content and a lot of user generated content, um, even though it may not directly affect our lead counts or our conversions. Um, and that's just because, you know, as we move more into that, as, as the job board industry evolves, you know, we've had to really uh, create more than just a place for them to find jobs. We had to create a place for them to want to come to. And also it's building that funnel, right? We're building that, that funnel, that conversion funnel, where we first focused at the bottom of the funnel, just getting the people that want jobs today. Well, there's a limited number of those people. So there's a function of, of branding and a function of creating interest and awareness to the top of the funnel, the people that are asking questions, the people that are learning, that want to know more, that haven't made a decision. So this is not something, all this stuff that I'm talking to you guys about right now is something that came up, things that have came up in the last two or three years. These are relatively new things in the job board industry. And some of the competitors are failing at this miserably. They have not moved. They have not adapted. I'm sure you've seen them. And we, we've had to adapt fast and we've had to adapt with an incredible amount of expense to keep up with every, everything that's kind of going on. And Google has also had to do that. Google came into the, into the play with a lot of this stuff built in and kind of ready to go, right? So now Google's in this. When Google gets in a niche or when Google gets in anything, it becomes the gold standard for what we have to do. So using programmatic, using a lot of this best, best in class, uh, you know, uh, AI features and, and, and matching, uh, everything is gonna start moving that way now for sure. For those of you who aren't familiar with Google for Jobs, before we get into it, 
basically it's Google's job board. Uh, when you actually go into the platform, uh, which you can do from the search engines, it looks something like this. I'm going to use a trucking example because we have it for both here. Uh, but you can see that the UI is pretty clean, pretty, uh, pretty clear. Uh, they don't have to turn pages. Everything's produced in the user interface. And you can see there's a lot of information, a lot of dates, and a lot of uh, data that is pulled into this as well. And what's interesting is they aggregate the job. Uh, so for example, this tractor trailer position, you can see through these uh, kind of blue blocks here that you can see you can apply directly, you can apply with an aggregate or job board, and it can list as many places there as you can apply. Um, what's really interesting and what's, what would make the most sense, right, is that the brand itself is given a lot of priority. And we're gonna talk a lot about that because a lot of you guys who are staffing agencies right now uh, are using job boards like us. And while I'm not trying to deter you from using job boards like us, don't take that <laughs> into what I'm saying, but it is a mix, right? So what I'm gonna try and tell you is you should be using us as well but you should be taking advantage of these little wins. And that's what we're gonna talk about, the brand bias that exists within Google and how you can take advantage of it. So how, why did Google get into this? You know, that's like you could answer the question what to make money, right? But they haven't monetized this yet and it's been three years. I believe they will, but it's not there yet. Basically, Google designed this to create efficiency in the job matching product. They're basically saying, uh, we can use our AI and our programmatic and we're really good at, at matching what people are searching for and providing the best search results. We do it in a whole bunch of, of, of verticals. Uh, and basically jobs was deemed to be one of the most important decisions a person can make. And they said, why aren't we in here? So they decided to roll in there. They launched a beta in 2017. They brought on several people just in that private beta. And the first person they went to was ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter was the launch partner, along with LinkedIn. Uh, shortly after Career Builder Monster Facebook got in, they actually approached Indeed first, um, and Indeed denied to, uh, to come on board. Uh, Danitas, Indeed, where the rest of us have kind of taken Google as a, uh, you know, as a com not a competitor, but a, a partner, right? A resource, a partner, a and a competitor. LinkedIn has taken kind of a, a direct competitor type of mentality where they believe Google to be a head-to-head -head competitor with them. They believe they're a serious contender, and they want absolutely not nothing to do with Google for jobs. That has softened a little bit, but they still don't have a heavy presence. They're not, they, they're they trying to go against it. And they have so much money and so much power, they believe they can. So we'll see what happens there. Um, but Google has rolled out several other experiences like this. A lot of you guys have seen it in travel, uh, shopping, flights, restaurants, entertainment. Jobs was really just the next best place. And we're gonna continue to see this going to other uh, places as well. So there's a couple ways you can trigger uh, and get into Google for jobs, just so that you guys know as you go into the search results. Um, Google's pretty good. There's been a couple uh, older uh, algorithm changes, starting with like Caffeine and Hummingbird back in the day, where Google basically uh, was able to search through natural, we call it natural language, natural linguistics to kind of understand what you mean by things. So Google's really able to find out when you're talking about a job. Beyond obviously having the job keyword in the search results, Google does a pretty good job of matching this, and that's why we're gonna talk a little bit about keyword research as we go in through here. Um, but anyway, uh, putting in a query like local trucking jobs in, in your area, that's the most direct one, that's gonna bring it up here. But you can also trigger it via brands, UPS jobs or you know careers or even, and, and by the way, it doesn't have to be just with the word jobs. You can use things like you know minimum pay for UPS package handlers or careers at this or benefits here. Google's pretty good at figuring out when you're talking about a job. They do a lot of testing on this. So brands will trigger Google for jobs. Locations will trigger Google for jobs. And even job types will, uh, will trigger uh, Google for jobs as well. Um, so why, why do you have to use it? You could be saying, well, look, we pay our job boards. We, we, we do all this other advertising. Why do we have to go to yet another job board or yet another place to go? Well, I'll tell you why. 85,000 job searches are made on Google every day. This was, I think, like six months ago when I put this together. I can't imagine what that number is right now during coronavirus with what is supposed to be, what, 15 to 20% or 10 to 20%, depending on who you talk to, projected or current unemployment during coronavirus. I imagine this could easily be triple or quadruple. Um, I mean, hundreds of thousands of people searching on Google every day for jobs right now. 73% of those who search for jobs start on Google. That's, you know, and again, this could raise a little bit as well as, more, uh, as we switch more from like passive candidates, kind of like, yeah, let's see what's out there. Is there anything better? As we move to, I need a job right now, 
that could also go up as well. So you're talking about you know four out of five people who start their job search on Google. And for healthcare, it's especially true, especially when you get specific into niches. And Google does such a good job of of, of displaying relevant search. So you know, you're looking for ICU travel nurse jobs, or you're looking for, you know, advanced practice or nurse practitioner locum jobs, you can get specifically where you want to go. So Google makes the most sense for active candidates. Again, lower, bottom lower of the funnel, more related to conversion. So when Google for Jobs came out, when we started gathering data here, we saw how it impacted the industry. So specifically, the sites that were, were or kind of set up for Google for Jobs and optimized for Google for Jobs, in aggregate, across many verticals, we heard and, and researched a 20% organic traffic increase, meaning that the, the traffic attributed from Google Organic was up 20%. Conversely, sites that were not optimized for Google for Jobs dropped up to about 40%. The most we saw was a 40% drop. Everybody kind of dropped a little bit. Um, average probably is closer to that 20, but some of these sites really, really, really lost it. I really lost it bad. Um, so, and again, if, you know, I would check if I was any of you guys that are not optimized for this, I would have your web team go back to the launch of Google for jobs in the seven, in the 2017 Q2, Q3 range, siphon out your organic traffic and check to see if you had a drop just to see how much you would have gained, knowing that you can get as much as 20% more. So there's always kind of an interesting uh, time when you go back and take a look at kind of the could have, could have what happened type of things. One of the reasons you may say, well, wow, how come people lost you know, so much traffic? Well, the reason is really a question of real estate. This is an example of you know, just a generic uh, pull from Google. And what do you, do you see all the other uh, job listing, or sorry, all the other search results here? And also the, uh, the paid ads that you guys run? No. Right? Why? Because Google is taking up the entire above the fold real estate of the search results page. Now, they've filtered ads back in because that's how they make their revenue. Because this is a member, this is not monetized right now. But, uh, you know, the reason there's such a big drop is because you can't get to the search results. They're below the fold. And what do we know about that? We know that once you get to like the, the, the I think it's position number five or position seven, if you include the ads that are paid up top, you see a dramatic drop off on, on people viewing search results. And what I can tell you from experience and from doing this for 12 years is that once you get past the fourth or fifth search result, you're actually better off being on page two at the top than you are at page one on the bottom. You know, just because things that we've heat mapped and, and the focus groups that we've ran and the industry data available, really, if you're not up here, then there's really no point which is why so many people are invested heavily in SEO and why pay-per-click will never die. So this has basically forced a couple trends for us to see. Organic search results became much more competitive because Google essentially blocked out that above the fold real estate and, and became super more saturated. Um, people started needing to be up there, so they started moving to CPC. And maybe, to be honest, maybe that is Google's goal, to basically drive more pay-per-click traffic. But people are using paid mediums like CPC, and because the internet became so much saturated, and so more saturated with Google, we started to see social really explode around that time. Um, and it was interesting because paid advertising in social, I'm talking about like Facebook and Instagram ads, for example, and even YouTube ads, um, they were never really known in the last two or three years for all the testing, again, depending on your vertical, to be very, uh, effective with conversion rates and cost per conversion uh, com and quality compared to Google traffic, for example, or search engine traffic. Because search engine traffic was so targeted and it was so specific and the intent was so clear. When you're working with things like Facebook ads and Instagram ads, previously in the past, the fact that they were more like window shoppers and they, would, they wouldn't convert as well and leads would be less qualitative and even though they were cheaper, um, so we've really seen that kind of move back the opposite way over the last couple a couple of years. But the Google has always remained, uh, you know, reigned supreme as far as quality and and directness, which is why we, even though, for example, our leads in Facebook and Instagram are cheaper than our leads in Google, the reason we maintain a, a presence in Google is because we've tested and we believe, and from our our research, is that the quality in Google is better than in Facebook. 
because you're why because you're getting more below the funnel you're getting more of that bottom of the funnel where their intent is more there than their their interest which is really uh kind of like tire kicking your window shopping and what you kind of see through these trends is people moving their money around to try and work around this massive hole in the search results. So, you know, kind of really going into SEO because they really need to be there now, but also they need to be here today. So PPC becomes that immediate scalable option, but then also uh, making sure that they're getting in that Google for job spot because that is the top five jobs and it is relatively easy to show up there. And I'm going to show you how, and it's free. So here's a, a, a kind of a thing I want you to wrap your head around here. Only 20% of the jobs, on Google for jobs come direct from companies. That's crazy to me. So only one in five of the jobs, or what do you call it? 20% of the jobs come from the actual brand itself. So if we have, we'll use trucking, for example, if you are whatever, an ABC trucking, you could only, you know, 80% of your stuff is, is found through aggregates or other job boards. Now, why is this such a missed opportunity to me? Because Google is well documented and well known to have what's called a brand bias, and it's it's actually an SEO tactic. Um, brand signals are are massive on Google, and in SEOs like myself, in the last you know fifteen years, we've spent a lot of time trying to emulate brand signals. And the cool thing about SEO is you don't have to be a big brand to have brand signals with Google. You can emulate the same signals to give you a little bit more push in the search engines. Um, but with Google for Jobs. Only 20% of the people are using that power. Uh, this means, again, and besides the brand building, the brand authenticity, your candidates aren't finding you first. As much as I want to have all the people come to, to us, right, all the users come to us, um, when they come to Travel Nurse Source, when they come to Locum Jobs Online or Ally Travel Careers or, or which, whichever one of our sites, they're going to be presented with that job, but they can apply to that job, and then they're going to be presented with other jobs and they're going to have the opportunity to explore the site and maybe take a, a cruise around some of the competitors and things like that. That's our value add to the users, right? Is that we're going to have to be able to show them, you know, we have the most amount of agencies than any other uh, job board in, in travel healthcare. We have the most amount of jobs and we're going to give them a one-stop shop. But for you as a client, although that's great and we produce value for you, you know, if it was between that or having everybody go directly to you as a choice of one or the other, which it's not, you would want them to come directly to you, right? So what this means is without with that not being directly going to Google for jobs, this means your candidates have to come through, come to you through other aggregates, okay? I wanna talk a little bit about a case study. Remember I, I said the ZipRecruiter was the lead dog in the beta, right? They were the one that, that basically came out and did the lead dog. Um, here's the results they came out with shortly after being launched. This is, they had to make it public, I believe is a requirement uh, to work with Google from what I heard, they saw their conversion rate grow almost 5x with Google for Jobs, the rate of what, of what they convert, five times over their current conversion rates, which you know is already good. They saw a 10% lower bounce rate. That bounce rate uh, basically is in what we call an, a qualitative metric, an engagement metric. What that tells us is that traffic is more qualified, they're more interested. Again, why I like Google traffic over Facebook traffic, even though it's more expensive, because of this, it is more engaged traffic. Uh, you know, they saw 35% increase in organic non-branded traffic, meaning their well, Google traffic went up, but only in things that didn't mention their name. Typically, you will see this evenly between brand and non-brand. It gave them a massive boost, 35% increase in traffic. Free targeted traffic. And they, that made them go heavy into Google for jobs. I remember reading that it now became an integral strategy in their growth because it was so effective for them. Now, full disclosure, they were the first ones on the board. <laughs> so these results are in the vacuum of them being the first ones on the board with, with several other, albeit humongous heavy players. So this has probably went down but still, even if it's two times better conversion rate and 20% increase in traffic, it's still fantastic. And, and here you go. So we're going to share some secret sauce with you guys here. Um, basically, for us, we see the you know very similar. So these are real. Um, we're going to share some secrets with you here. Yes, we convert one in every four entrants into our website. 
turns into a lead for us or turns into an account for us. Why? Because we're very, very, very good at what we do. And we do a ton of testing, a ton of redevelopment. We test everything. We even mouse flow, which is like a digital video showing their movements through our site. So we can even tweak and optimize things like form validations and, and different things like that. We are insanely intentional about our testing so that we can get these good of rates, right? So our, on our cost per click, our, our, our advertising, our PPC, um, specifically like Google PPC, for example, we're converting 25% of the traffic that, come, that comes in into applications. Um, Facebook, 20%. Google for jobs. Uh, on a bad day, Google for jobs converts at 18% and higher. I've seen it up over, I have never seen it better than Google CPC, but I've seen it close. Um, but here's the difference. The second two of these, I don't pay for. <clears throat> Even better than Facebook organic, I would say too. Um, this, the last two, I don't, we don't pay anything for, right? Google organic. Now, um, why is Google organic of 5%? Some of you may, may be saying, or some of you may be saying, wow, Google Organic's conversion rate really sucks for track five. Well, not so much, right? So remember when I was telling you that we had to raise the bar, we have to, we can't just be concentrated on converting people. We have to be able to build that interest, build that, create that awareness and build that funnel. So we've created tons of content that is not necessarily meant at, at converting today, but building interest and building that long-term funnel. Just like you guys build funnels and, and, and build that, that that, uh, that funnel with your leads, right? There's people that are gonna convert today and there's people that are gonna need a little bit of time for whatever reason. You wanna keep that pipeline going. All right, so how do we get you guys going for, and chomping at the bit for Google for Jobs? So you have two basically high level options to be represented on Google for Jobs. One is go yourself. Other is go through a job board that we call an aggregate uh, to get represented on there. So you could be with us uh, or several other competitors. I know pretty much all the, uh, I think pretty much all the job boards at this point are in on Google for Jobs. Uh, what I still don't see is a ton of brands in there, uh, which is which is a shame. Um, again, reasons for you going in direct. You're going to get more trust than we will when it comes to your job uh, specifically. We're going to have a little bit less trust because uh, we're not that job. However, we do create a lot of trust because people view us as an independent resource. So when it comes to the industry, we gain a lot of a lot of trust. But specifically, your specific jobs, you know, you're going to have more trust than us. Um, you're going to have better higher engagement. We're going to have less engagement with us because we have more options. You're going to get more exclusivity. You're going to get better messaging. And you're going to, your brands are going to get priority. Um, we have to share the crawfish with everybody, if you will. You guys are going to be able to do that by yourself. Okay? To get started, you got to have one of these. you got to have a job board. Okay? Um, now, a lot of you guys have that. But I want to make mention, you've embedded it from your applicant tracking system. So a lot of your applicant tracking systems will give you a, a little widget that you can throw on your site. And basically what that does is it shows your jobs in an iframe or shows your job board, if you will, in some sort of plugin, uh, an embedded plugin that's not crawlable to search engines. Search engines cannot see within it. The users can use it, but the, but the actual job boards can't see it. Um, it should stay on the same domain. So nothing like jobs.medicalsolutions.com. It has to be, you know, medicalsolutions.com slash jobs, right? It has to be easily crawled and, and accessed. So how do you know uh, if Google can crawl your site? So we know that the Google's crawler, the bot that, that Google uses, or the bots, I should say, that Google uses, have limitations to how they can crawl the architecture of websites. Uh, specifically, as things go kind of levels down in a hierarchical architecture, you know, home page, secondary pages, tertiary pages, job posts, listings, they start to go down. And the further you go down in that hierarchical uh, architecture, the harder the crawlers, it, it takes for the crawlers to go down there. Typically two to three to four levels down, your crawlers kind of die. And that's why when you, you can actually check in Google to see how much of your site is actually in its index. And once you get to a certain size or, or if you have really poor SEO architecture, you will find out that you're not even being shown in the search results because you're not even being crawled. So a really good uh, you know, thing for you guys to do is to go to Webmaster Tools or to go to Google and use the site semicolon your domain and it'll show you all in, in the search query and it'll show you all the pages um, that, are, are, that are indexed. And you'll find either one of two things, that you're missing some or you've got way more pages in, in Google's index than you have actual pages on your site. 
which is another SEO issue that's hurting you as well. Um, one way you can get around this and one way to help is to build a sitemap, which is a very like 1990s way of doing it, but it helps. Um, kind of a static sitemap, which is kind of in the footer of your site, uh, helping Google crawl and get to these, these pages that are lower in your site, but also an XML sitemap, which you can load into Google's Webmaster Tools as well, which is Google's platform uh, to help kind of communicate with the webmaster. By the way, that's free. The Google Webmaster Tools, which is called Search Console now, um, that's something you guys should all be using. Google Search Console, uh, Google it and get on it. It's basically Google's way of communicating how well it's crawling your site. And you would be surprised how much information Google gives away that's really, really helpful. As far as the posts that you create, you have to become uh, conf uh, confident with a couple uh, things, right? So we have to give information. Company, location, address. Okay, staffing companies, this is huge. You can't give Google something that says Northern Los Angeles or, or Southern California or New York City Metro. It has to be a legitimate address. Why? Because if it can't run it against the postal service and can't map it, it's gonna subvert you in the, in the results. You're gonna show up at the very bottom. Um, salary, amount or a range. We're gonna talk about this. Now this is huge. Two years ago, if I told one of our clients that we need to put their their pay rates in here, they would have killed me. Now with the entrance of the marketplaces where it's required, this is becoming more acceptable. And I think it's actually a really good thing. However, we still have a lot of clients that don't want to give their pay rates away. Why? Because they don't want people to know what's going on. They don't want to be held to it. Um, you know, but that's a whole other subject we're going to talk about in a sec here. Employment type, your date that it was posted, your expiration date, your job title and job description. You can't have shortcuts. This is the bare minimum requirement to get on there. Okay, and we're gonna talk about how to make these a little bit better. The argument over providing salary data, which besides the business case argument, okay, I wanna talk to you about the specific, uh, the specific um, uh, argument related to the, the aggregates themselves, the, the Google for Jobs. Um, the big thing here is that we, the Google for Jobs is gonna show a salary whether you put one in. Here's a good example here, okay? These guys didn't put a salary in, but you can see here, Google actually pulls from, uh, I don't know if stability is on the call or not, but Google actually pulls the salary from over here, from Payscale, Glassdoor, Salary.com. And this salary, or the, you know, first of all, it's not a salary, right, in, in travel assignments, but, these users get a, a, an idea of what you're paying, which could be dramatically lower or higher. So your, your best thing is to put it in, which they do over here. So if you don't have anything here, all you're getting is this. But it can be really, really difficult um, with, with their salary options. So just know that that's part of it. Um, you need to add schema. When you have your job board, the next thing you have to do is wrap part of your code. So you have your code on your website. And then what a schema does is it allows you to place an, an additional piece of code to, that basically communicates with Google what something is. A best example of this would be if you had a logo on your site and you would have the code that would say, you know, the, in the name of that image, the name of that file, you would add a second piece of code telling Google that that image is your company logo. So when Google crawls your site, it looks for the secondary code, which we call schema, and it will pull things for what it's looking for. And I'll show you how that looks like. And, and first of all, I just want to get in here, jobbyac.ai, write that one down. There's several tools that will help you with this schema. There's also several services. Uh, any web developer can do it. But this is a good example. So here's the, like our code, right? Here's our code for all truck jobs on the left. And you can see this is a schema checker. So this is checking the Google for Jobs code. And this is basically an emulator of what Google is pulling. So this shows you how Google is able to pull this from the code. And this is a free tool. Remember I talked about that Google for Jobs, I'm sorry, that Google um, Search Console that's free? This is a tool within Search Console. So if you have a job board on your site now and you're not sure that, you, you know, maybe your developer said they did it or maybe you think you have it but you're not sure. If you were to go to the, the structured data testing tool within Google Search Console and just put in your, one of your search results and if it doesn't populate stuff over here, then you know it's not there. Some tips for optimization, using salary. Again, you don't do it, it's gonna put you down and put something in there as well. Location, city and state. Don't put in just the state, don't put United States, be specific. Don't, not well, abbreviate I should say. You know, here's the kicker here guys, and here's where this gets really tough. We like using 
non-abbreviated titles in our jobs. Why? Because if everybody clicks CDL class A trucking job or travel nurse job, you know, ICU travel nurse job, how are you supposed to differentiate yourselves in the search results of a job board if everybody's saying the same thing? You can't. Brand comes into play, placement comes into play, but it sucks that you have to do this, right? So what we do is we will actually change your job title in some of these, specifically in trucking, where we will actually put the short, give you the option to put in a shorter abbreviated code like this because you want to use keywords. And then when you move it to here, you can uh, when you when the client when the user comes to our job board, we will actually show them a longer title in the search results to get a little bit more descriptive to make them have that click through rate, right? But for these for Google for Jobs specifically, keep it short and sweet. The more words you use for Google for Jobs, the less targeted it will be. And for that targeting, you want to use keyword research. There's a bunch of tools you can use, which I'll talk about in a sec. And you may say, I know my keywords. It's 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 travel nursing jobs, duh. Well, it is and it isn't. There's way more than that. And because you have ample opportunity in the description and the requirements, you can start embedding some of these secondary tertiary keywords in here that are a little less uh, maybe results, but they are still things people search for. So there's a way to do this smarter. So you don't just show up for one big keyword. You can show up for 20, 30 medium-sized keywords, which by the way, ends up being more than that one keyword. It's called the long tail, if you've ever heard of that. Um, keywords, a couple great tools I recommend, um, not just for Google for jobs, but also for, um, you know, also for everything else here. Uh, Google has a free uh, a tool, the, uh, the Google Keyword Planner here, oops, sorry, is, is AdWords uh, uh, keyword tool. It's free, it's the best. Uber suggests and answer the public. If any of you guys haven't been to this answer the public, it's pretty cool. Um, basically, what it does is it shows you keyword research in the form of questions. So all the things people are asking, this doesn't really do a lot for you in the conversion part of the funnel, but does a really great job kind of giving you that top level funnel, uh, things people are searching, things are people are considering and becoming a travel nurse or getting a travel assignment for you. This helps you do that. It's nice to kind of put some of those in your job postings so you can get some of those searches and show up for some of those searches, but no shortage of keyword tools. Trending data, Google Trends also is a really good uh, kind of way to kind of evaluate keyword usage and how things change. Uh, this is just interesting. For fun, I put in like travel nursing jobs and travel PT jobs. Look at the, in, so blue is travel nursing jobs. Look at the increase in how many searches the phrase travel nursing jobs is getting. And look at the decline in the, tra in, uh, you know, since uh, probably about February here um, of, of PT jobs. You can see just PTs just tank. And you can see travel nurse jobs just go three times higher than it's ever been, which would represent what you guys are seeing. You want to be really detailed when it comes to the other parts of the job ads, the skills section, the responsibility section, the qualification sections. Again, use these keywords, have a big list, include them in here. This is, you want to also sell your position, sure, absolutely, and you want to convert, but you need to be able to do that as well. You need to also be unique. Some examples that I have here, 500 words, 3% keyword density. So if you're using those keywords, don't use them too much or become spammy. But if you don't use them enough, it's ineffective. I try to get at least 3%, 3% keyword density, 500 words. And I try to also spin some of these job postings in an Excel format or programmatically so that they are a little bit unique. It's, you're not, you don't have to write them all by hand, but you can pro programmatically uh, concatenate that in Excel um, to make that a little bit more unique. And, and Jillian will, will tell you any day how unique jobs uh, do so much better in our job board partners and on our site than, than everyone else. We've been seeing it for years. Um, you got to make sure your SEO is up to par. None of this does any good if you've got technical issues, crawlability issues, site architecture issues, your site speed is crap. Consider an SEO audit. Uh, we have a ton of tool sets that we spend a lot of money and we've been doing this for a very long time. Um, you know, let us know. We'd be happy to point you in the right direction uh, of a good SEO firm or whatnot, but definitely make sure you're having these issues because if Google can't crawl your jobs, it doesn't matter. This is why, um, and also let's consider this, the user experience and engagement rate, we have to track this. Google looks at this. Google has access to your analytics. It's, it knows your bounce rate and your click-through rate. So it's really important that your titles and that your, 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 your uh, job postings have substance that make people not immediately leave and go somewhere else. Google tracks this, and so do we, by the way. We emulate Google in that way where we track the, the conversions how, of how people apply to your jobs. We rank and sort uh, your jobs by how well they do and how, how well our, your, our audience thinks that they are. Um, you know, there's not a lot of effort being put into jobs, and it kind of 
it kind of shows. Um, conversions are huge too. So what I, I want to mention this, don't put so much effort into the SEO and the Google for jobs and the, the, the marketing strategy that you forget about actually how people are converting the programmatic side. Um, make sure you're tracking your conversions with analytics. Uh, you want to use heat mapping tools or testing tools. Um, I'm going to recommend one here that I really, really like. It's basically, you, you guys saw how good our conversion rates are, right? I mean, they're industry leading. Um, Mouseflow is a really good tool, um, which provide, I mean, we use a bunch of them, but Mouseflow is uh, really cool. So what Mouseflow does is Mouseflow basically records keystrokes and mouse movements and basically reconstructs them in a video that basically shows you how they came into the site, how they filled out your, your app, where they went, uh, any issues they had, they, you know, that they, you know, where did they go first, where their eyes went, all this kind of stuff. And it's helped us clean up our, our tools a lot. Just things like entering a name or a phone number where people enter it a certain way and the, the form doesn't take it, right, because it wants it a certain way. Uh, making adjustments to be more accommodating so that you know we can keep people moving quickly through the process has, has been uh, you know, pivotal to our success. Um, we also want to make sure that your expired jobs, which expire, are redirecting to the right place. Uh, so this is kind of funny, right? So this is a trucking example again. Uh, we see this CarMax truck job in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, right? Cool. Three different places to go. So I go to LinkUp. Hopefully none of you guys use them. But anyway, we go to LinkUp. Uh, nice looking job post kind of sort of here we go we go to apply and boom um, you know this is an example of a, a, a paid vendor doing this right and and this is this is something it's a programmatic issue but I can tell you that a lot of you guys as well um, have issues like this as well so I want to make sure that you're not you know that this is like a three-pronged approach it's marketing it's search but it's also conversion and also your programmatic you got to make sure you have uptime you have to make sure you don't have 404s um, which, by the way, we talked about Google Search Console is available in Google Search Console as well to track your 404s. And oftentimes, there's a programmatic fix that needs this. So I know I kind of went fast here at the end just to get you guys some questions. But in conclusion, make sure your vendors are up to date. Um, that include uh, that can include job boards, consultants, marketing teams, internal teams. Um, we need to be compliant. We need to be moving the way. That, that this direction and this wave is taking us and, and the way we'll be okay for, for tomorrow. Um, invest in SEO best practices and quality job boards. So you want quality partners. Uh, we are a quality partner, right? We have 26 people, two offices. Um, you know, we've had amazing growth and, and we, you know, we do things right. We don't do things cheap, easy, or quick, but we do them right. And we're happy to help pass on some of that knowledge to you guys. Um, SEO best practice is another one. Find a very good SEO person. I can tell you that from being an SEO for almost 15 years, almost 20, 80% um, of your SEO people are absolute really bad, they're garbage. Um, I shouldn't say that, that's kind of mean. Not garbage, but they only take you past a certain level, like very, very low, very low level. Find yourself a very good one, get to that 20%. It makes the difference. Test everything, tweak everything, and then test, test, and test again. Become obsessed. With, with testing and, and proving things right and wrong. Um, that's gonna get you to, to, to really succeed. Um, and again, Google for Jobs should be a complement and an addition to a mix of tools and resources. You know, it can be your paid, you know, your paid, your job board marketing, your organic, your, your non, you know, non-digital, I mean, you know, trade shows, you know, everything mixed in together. It's not a magic pill, but as you've seen, it can have some amazing results. And I say it's free with a tongue in cheek, but it's not free, right? You're gonna have to pay for some resources. You're gonna have to pay for some help to get it there, but no pain, no gain, but it is fantastic. And again, you guys have that brand bias. You could be doing better than all the other job boards that you pay, including myself. You could be doing way better by using Google for jobs because you're gonna push all of us out of it. Not out of it, but you're gonna reduce the, the amount of exposure we have by being there first. So, questions? Awesome. Thank you, Oliver. Um, again, this is Jill jumping in here. Uh, we did get a couple of questions coming through during um, your talk. So I'm going to pick out a couple of them and have you kind of answer those. If we don't get to a question that you submitted, we will um, review it and send you an answer via email, but we'll get to as many as we can here in the last 10 minutes or so. Um, I'm going to pick this one from Jim. Um, he asked about posting jobs on behalf of another brand. And I asked him to expand on that. And he said, you know, we're a sourcer, not necessarily a recruiter. So we post opportunities on behalf of our clients, 
but we're transparent. So we want the candidate to see who the client is, example, ABC Hospital, but point to the job posting on our site. So how do you, how would you handle that? Right. So there's a couple different ways you can handle that. Um, you can be a third party. So we handle it that way, right? So we are not, uh, I don't know, preferred healthcare, right? But we may have preferred healthcare on our board. So we will actually, as a job board and as a third party, show the client on there directly in the feed that goes out. So uh, Google for Jobs is able to pull that transparent client out there and, and, as, and we are that, that, that sourcing. So we're kind of the same, right? The other option you can do, which is what a lot of companies are doing, and it's kind of a little misleading, but it does produce better results. To be honest, we're probably going to move that way. Um, we've kind of haven't wanted to just because I don't think it's the most ethical way to do it, but it seems to be the, the new way of doing it, which is basically um, masking the on Google for jobs that it's for another company or hiding the company. So essentially, your, your, your company is the, the company hiring on Google for jobs specifically. And when you click that job post and it comes into your job site, um, you can see that it's actually for another company. Um, you know, Nursefly, Wanderly do it this way. Um, it's kind of a little, it's, it's very misleading, but it is highly effective. Um, you know, we, we're pretty up and up. We tell it's travel nurse source. We're, you know, recruiting for preferred healthcare and, and blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, but that's kind of the way everyone's going. So those are the two options. Great. Um, I know that you touched on this a little bit as well with the whole um, branding with the, the company itself getting a little bit um, higher rankings and things like that. Um, but Jim also wanted to know how you deal with job aggregators competing with your own job posts. He said that he's noticed this in his own experience with Google for Jobs. So um, specifically as it relates to Google for Jobs, you're going to have it. It's going to happen, uh, especially if you're paying them. It comes with it. Uh, you know, there's the only way you can go around that is is to not use them. But I mean, you want them, right? Because here's the deal: you want as much exposure for your jobs as you're getting. Keep in mind, as you being the brand, you're going to get priority with that, and you're going to be the one that Google pushes. Know that although they physically are competing with you, and it looks like you know visually they are competing with you, know that you're probably going to get three to four times as many clicks as they are. So it's really important, and that's why it's important that you use quality job job providers and they're going to give you that return so that if they get that lead from you, that it's going to convert well for you. All right. Um, another question here, Andrew asks, um, regarding location and Google not being able to crawl successfully without that, he mentioned a lot of travel nurse agencies are under contracts with larger healthcare systems and they can't legally share the actual hospital up front. Uh, they can't show a city in location uh, well, they, he said they can show a city and location, but never the actual hospital. How do you how do you dance around that? So you can show the you can actually do the city. So you can do the city and state. Um, it it would be a little less effective than the full address, but it, I mean, in that industry, you're in a situation where everyone is kind of abide by those as well. So um, city and state would be fine. What, where we run into the biggest issues, Andrew, is when we see things like Northern California or um, Garment District, New York City or these kind of like non-trackable locations that people try to put in for some reason. So just keep it kind of to the actual specific location. If you can't point to it on a map, like physically of what it says, then don't put it in. But city and state will be fine. Good question. Um, and then this is, uh, it's more of kind of a statement. I don't know if you have any thoughts on this uh, rather than an actual question, but um, Jim had also mentioned that they currently employ the Google metadata for job postings and it works really well for nurse practitioners and physician assistants, but not as well for physicians. Would you have any thoughts on why that might be? A lot of it is physicians are just really finicky. Um, so we've seen, we've seen that as well, not just in our job board network, but also Google for jobs and even Facebook, um, you know, it's been very difficult to get uh, non advanced practice like locum providers uh, in digital marketing. I mean, we definitely do a ton of it and we, you know, we do well with it, but um, it is, it is extremely expensive. They are very finicky. Um, and a lot of it is just the, not that they're averse to technology, but um, they just kind of don't, they just don't have the the intent to move as, as much as the other providers do. 
they're kind of settled and in, in where they go. The intent isn't there. That's why concept marketing comes in so much into play with locum because you're not necessarily going to get them from the, the conversion related interest driven uh, searches. Like I want to move today. They are there and it does happen, but where you really get the locum specifically is in that higher level uh, funnel, which is in that, that creating that, that information and things like that. Thank you, Oliver. I think that is all the questions that um, we had come through so far. If anybody else has any last minute questions, feel free to submit them while you're still on here. Again, um, we'll be able to review those and send you an email with um, answers there. If you don't get a chance to ask a question on here, feel free to reach out to your account manager or myself um, with those questions as well. We would be happy to get with Oliver um, and get you some answers for those um, but yeah, that's all we have for now. Again, thank you, Oliver, for kind of running us through all of that. I know, like you said, it was a lot of information in a short amount of time, but hopefully you guys found it helpful. Um, again, we will have a, uh, recording of this webinar, um, that we will send out to you. I think it does it automatically from Livestorm, um, but we'll hopefully send that out as well. So if you guys want to share this with rest of your team um, or anyone else that you think uh, would be interested in this, or if you want to go back through and listen into parts again, um, we'll have that available for you. So thank you again, Oliver. Um, and thank you all for taking the time to run through this today. My pleasure. And also my email address is on the screen there, Oliver at track five. Uh, feel free to email me any questions you have or give me a call or LinkedIn me or whatever. Even if you want to take a look at something, if I can help really quickly and and give you point you in the right direction. Be happy to, um, you know, you guys have all, you know, those of you that are clients with us, uh, I took a look coming in here. A lot of you guys have been with us for many, many years. And uh, I just, from the bottom of my heart and from everyone at Track 5, thank you guys for being amazing partners. And, you know, we, we're pretty blessed with the clients we have. I mean, compared to other industries and, uh, you know, we're really grateful for the, the, the support you guys give us and, and the partnership we have with all of you. And uh, anytime we can return the favor uh, and help you guys out, beyond our, our professional capacity, we're always willing to. So thanks guys for being such amazing clients and uh, anything we can ever do to make your lives easier, please don't ever hesitate to give me a call or any of my team, let us know. Any other questions or are we good? I think we are good. All right guys, uh, on, a, on a note before we depart, we hope that you, uh, you stay safe, you stay healthy, and uh, we look forward to, uh, to kind of getting back into this once this virus stuff goes away. Um, but we look forward to this and we'll see you on another one of these uh, Lunch and Learns. Any, any, uh, if there's any kind of ideas for other ones we can do, also email me, Oliver at Track 5, if there's anything SEO related or recruitment tech related or, or whatever, anything we can help share. Maybe you want to know how we get so good conversion rates. We could do one on conversion optimization. Um, yeah, let me know. We'd be happy to help. If not, good luck, guys, and uh, stay safe. Thanks again. Thanks, everyone.